Hey there, hope you're doing good. Today we'll talk about the relationship between latency and utilization. Specifically CPU utilization. CPU utilization is a fraction of time the CPU is being used. So if you are allocated two CPUs and you're using one CPU at 100% and one at 0%, then your utilization is 50%. You're using one of the two CPUs. It's expressed as a percentage. Zero means you're not using it at all. 100 means you're using it completely. Many services we run are interactive. They are used by users in real time. They're not background services. In these cases, utilize, uh, latency matters. If it is slow, people will leave. As utilization increases, response time increases. For a long time, the difference is small, say until 75% or 80%. Even if your utilization increases, response time changes only a little. But once you cross this threshold, the graph becomes exponential. One of the services I used to run had a latency of less than 100 milliseconds when unloaded. However, once the CPU utilization crossed 80%, it shot up to 10 seconds from less than 100 milliseconds to 10 seconds, which is a factor of 100 degradation. So when you go from 40% utilization to 80% utilization. It's just double, but the latency can increase 100 times. So one aside from this is that if you're measuring the latency of a system, you should always measure it at a particular utilization. If you say the latency of the system is 100 milliseconds, that's not very well defined. The unloaded latency is different from the loaded latency. For example, the latency of an unloaded MySQL database running on RDS with an SSD is less than one millisecond. That's how we should say. We shouldn't say the latency of an SQL server running on RDS with an SSD is one millisecond. No, the key word is unloaded. That's the best case. So anyway, coming back to the main point, Given this exponential graph, you should not run your services at high utilization. And if you get this wrong, the latency graph will tell you. So you don't need to obsess about the exact number. Is it 70? Is it 75? Is it 80? Just look at the latency graph. Check it against your target. If your target is a three second latency, let's say, or a one second or whatever it is, and your graph shoots up, Check the CPU utilization. If that has also increased at the same time, then you know that the latency is because of CPU utilization and not some other reason. And if there are multiple layers in the system, you need to check the CPU utilization at each layer, your app server layer, your database layer, etc. Why does this happen though, if you're curious? If you're not curious, you can stop watching this video the main takeaways we already covered. The next part is just about why it works the way it does. So if you're curious, keep watching. Naively, you may think that the latency should not shoot up until you hit 100% CPU utilization. After all, you have a certain amount of CPU and if you consume it completely, then subsequent requests will be queued. They have to be queued because the CPU is not available to execute it causing the latency to spike. But until then, until 100%, it shouldn't spike. That may be your mental model. And it was mine as well. This is a counterintuitive thing. Let me give a real world analogy. Assume you have a ticket counter at a railway station and that it takes one minute to issue a ticket. And assume that you have passengers coming in at the rate of one per minute. So each passenger, when he gets his ticket and leaves, at exactly that instant, the next passenger comes to buy another ticket. In this system, the passengers are not queuing. So from the passenger's point of view, this system is ideal. You can't improve it further. 
the ticket agent is also 100% utilized. He's not sitting idle between passengers because that would be a waste. You're paying for his time and you're not fully utilizing it. So this is optimal for both sides. In real life, this is not possible. It can be optimal only for one side. In real life, customers come in at an uneven rate. And also, different customers may take different time to uh, buy a ticket. They may take a few seconds to think. They may decide they don't want to buy a ticket and leave. They may buy multiple tickets. They may buy a group ticket which takes time, whatever the situation is. So both the income in the arrival rate is uneven and the time for each request is uneven. In this case, what happens is you need to have multiple ticket counters and some of them idle to absorb the peak. This is the same reason why restaurants often have free tables because they have to allocate enough tables for the peak. If the restaurant tried to run at 100% utilization, that would mean that throughout the day, customers would come in and find no table free and leave. So the restaurant would lose a lot of customers. And going back to servers, the similar thing hap a, a similar thing happens there. At high utilization, what happens is an incoming request doesn't find available CPU for it to be executed. So it waits. And while it waits, another request comes in. That also waits. So it's like a cascading effect. Everything adds up. That is why the utilization spikes. Since each request still takes 100 milliseconds to execute, a 10 second latency means that the queuing time is 100 times as much as the execution time. The queues are really backing up. This happens in any system when the arrival rate is more than the completion rate. So that is why you need to run systems at low utilization.